today on Always Hungry, we're gonna be making a duck bami. That's right, a duck bami. I made this thing with my buddy Owen Han. Owen sees his handle somewhere there. Uh, in LA uh, and it was so good I had to make it in a long format so we'll do it step by step so buckle up and let's cook so let's get started for a banh mi you always need some good condiment and the classic is always pickled carrots and pickled daikon let's get it so you're gonna need one daikon we're gonna make the whole thing it's a massive daikon but uh, also we're gonna need our pickling liquid, which is very simple. We're gonna do a classic vinegar, water, sugar, salt, and get all spices in there. I have some uh, star anus, I have some uh, coriander seeds, and a little like pickling mix in there. I think it's like black pepper corn, uh, bay leaves, anyways. Okay, so we have equal parts sugar, equal parts salt, we're gonna add in there one liter of a water, cold water to start, always, because you know. I'm gonna bring this to a boil in there. I'm gonna put maybe like a, let's do, let's do four star anus. We're gonna also eyeball this, maybe like uh, freaking lids every time. We're gonna make, uh, we're gonna do probably one uh, tablespoon, no, half a tablespoon of pickling spices. There you go, that's good enough. Uh, once this is gonna be boiling, we're gonna strain it and pour it on our julienne carrots and daikon. Oh, I almost forgot, vinegar. I should have probably put less water, but it's fine. Let's put some vinegar in there. It'll be a big batch, you know. It's always good to have pickling liquid, not too far. And now we can start peeling our beautiful daikon. If you don't know what a daikon is, well, it's about time you know what it is. It's a radish, it's a Japanese radish. So it pretty much just tastes like a regular radish. And now, just to have, you know, nice, even pieces of carrots and daikon. I'm gonna use this good old thing called a mandolin, not the music instrument, the Japanese mandolin. All right, let's get it. That's perfect. That's beautiful, you see this? Perfect. If you're too scared to use a mandolin, that's totally fine. You can just use your knife. Or you can just, you know, deal with your fear. There you go. So see, I feel like um, the daikon is the easy part of the job. We're gonna take our slices here, place them nice, all stacked up. So now, if you have your stack of beautiful even slices, we're just gonna cut those up like this, like this, like this. And there you have it. So see, beautiful daikon, julienne, like this. So now uh, we have a beautiful pickling jar, uh, pretty standard, you can use uh, Anything with like a hermetic seal on it, like a tight seal, because uh, you want to keep this in the fridge for you know a long time because it's pickles, but it needs to be properly stored. So now we're gonna put our pieces of daikon directly in there. Oh, this is almost boiling. We gotta hurry up. Stack it up. Stack it in. So boom here, daikon goes in. Boom. And now we can stop this because it's boiling. Now it's carrots time. So like I said, if you're doing this at home, buy some bigger carrots. 
These are delicious, but very small. So it's gonna take more time, but you know, it's fine. We have plenty of time, right? How much time do we have? Plenty of time. I don't know. I'm just gonna do a few. Get the same amount of daikon and carrots in there. 50-50, eh? 50-50. All right, all right, whoa, 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 okay. All right, so carrots are peeled, and now, same thing, we're gonna mandolin those. And hopefully you not lose a finger. Let's just go slowly, nice and slowly. Nice and slowly. Nice and slowly. There you go, that's easy. You know, you just need a good mandolin. If it's not sharp, well, you might just suck and lose a finger, you know? And a good trick for y'all at home, who are scared, well, option A, you can keep that little, that little guard that comes with it. In most kitchen, they get a mandolin from the box, they take the guard, and it's in the garbage. So, it's very simple actually. Carrot, or whatever you want to put on there. And then you know, just the palm on your carrot, or your vegetable, or whatever, and fingertips pointing to the sky. So this way, the worst that could happen is you might cut a bit of your palm, but you know, it's like you have a better control, but your fingers at least are out of the way. Because you know, you need your fingers, right? So like this, slowly, you kind of, you have to connect with the mandolin, you know what I mean? It's like you need to be one with the mando. Because these are trickier than the daikon, because you know, it's harder. They like to like, uh, they like kind of like uh, in the weird shape. We're gonna line them up on the cutting board like this. Honestly, the better you place them, the easier it's gonna be for you after. So take the time to kind of like build your little carrot fortress or carrot playground. And then we chop. All right, so carrots are all done. No. That didn't work out like I thought it was gonna work out. <clears throat> Alright, so now carrots, about the same amount as a daikon, I would say. Hey, what do you say? Yeah. It's pretty fucking close to me. It doesn't have to be perfect, guys. You know, it's just pickles edgies in the jar or the daikon like this, like like this all around it, that's perfect too. That works. Now, I'm probably gonna make a mess with this. I'm probably gonna make a mess pouring this liquid in there, but you know what? Let's just try it. What are the odds of me making a mess? Yeah, probably right, 90% is accurate. Well, whatever, I like to live dangerously. So you can use uh, you know, a little to get this done, but I like to just go right in there. One, two, three. Oh, hey, I mean, it's a small mess. It's a very minor mess. And see, only one star artist made it in there. It's probably a sign too. The key now is to let this room temperature to cool down and uh, you know it's the best thing is to let this 24 hours in the fridge before using them but in this case we're gonna wait 24 minutes there you go pickle daikon and carrots done next step is gonna be time to infuse this delicious honey this is not a sponsored video, but shout out to Peace River, based out of Alberta. They make some great honey and they send it to me. So, you know, thank you. Um, so yeah, basically we're just gonna put a bunch of aromatics and uh, basically, yeah, we're just gonna like bring this to a boil, get all the flavor in the honey, strain that up and that's gonna be the glaze for the duck later. So let's get going. All right. so. Boom, here in a pan, we're gonna add some beautiful honey. Should I put the honey first or the vegetable first? Honey first, all right. So, honey, 
liquid honey or in French, a miel liquide. <laughs> okay. Boom. We're gonna pour this whole thing of honey. That's like 500 grams. I don't know about mLs. Oh yeah, so all the honey in there. Oh. Honey is just so beautiful. I don't know. I have a thing for honey. Let's start with the aromatics. So lemongrass here. Put this on this side here. This on this side. Here on this side. We're going to chop the ends like this. Whoa, 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 whoa. So a good trick for lemongrass is you want to smack it the fuck down. So it's going to give out all its flavor. So we're going to cut this in half like this. So hard. And now we're going to smash this. I need a bigger knife. That's heavier, I think. Kind of like this, it's so hard. Maybe I'll use something else, eh? Hey? How's that? <laughs> use a fan maybe, how's that? No. All right, so one thing we learned is that lemongrass is very hard. So, I'm gonna cut this like that. And then we're just gonna chop it like this, roughly. The smaller you cut your lemongrass, the more flavor you can extract from it. So use a sharp knife and get it done. There you go, it smells so good. I fucking love lemongrass. So lemongrass. Uh, oh, in. There you go. Next, we're gonna do some garlic. Like this, smash it. All right, smash that, smash that. You can even leave the skin on. That's what I did last time with Owen. But you know, now uh, I feel like taking it off, so I'll just take it off. Uh, so skin. Peel the garlic after you smash it, it's easier. Boom, boom. This is a fucking giant clove of garlic. All right, sweet. Smells good though, smells like good garlic. All right, so garlic in the pot. Boom. Uh, next, we're gonna do one shallot. Peel that up, and we're just gonna slice this up roughly. Boom, shallot, in, boom. We're gonna make it spicy with these little chilies. They're getting kind of old, but you know what? It's perfect for what we need. So we'll just put these, cut these in half, I guess. Fuck it. Like this. Like this. Chili in. Boom. And uh, ginger, we're not gonna peel though. We're just gonna cut right into it. Like this. enough. So ginger goes in. And that's pretty much it. And now, and now, and now, 
Let's get to the spices to make this delicious honey. We're gonna go again with uh, our star anus. We're gonna go with some black pepper. We're gonna go with some coriander seeds. We're gonna do like a one teaspoon of course, coriander seeds. Boom. We're gonna do one little stick of cinnamon. Uh -huh. There we go. We're gonna do a few black peppercorn. Oh, like this. About a teaspoon as well. And we're gonna do, that's not gonna go through. Couple of star anus, maybe like, uh, that's probably like two. Boom. And we can get this going. There you go. Just gonna bring this to a simmer. The goal is to extract all the flavor from those aromatics and pass them on to the honey that we're gonna strain. And like I said, this will become our glaze for the duck. So it's gonna be the most delicious honey in the goddamn world. Got me? Feel me? You feel me, bro? You feel me, bro? We're also gonna need one jalapeno for garnish, cut in thin slices, so let's get it out of the way. That didn't work out. That did not work out either. Perfect. So just thin slices. And that's it. That's in there. That's in there. So jalapeno on the side. That's good. There you go. Oh yeah. So you can see the honey is starting to bubble nicely. Look at that. Is that beautiful or what? Is that fucking beautiful or what? Oh Billy. Okay, the smell is already out of control. Can you hear that? Looks like a little bird's dying in there. Am I right? <laughs> All right, so now I'm gonna bring this down to a little simmy simmer. You don't wanna burn the honey and the aromatics. Let that simmer. You see how that, those bubbles are going all the way up? That's because the honey is starting to caramelize. And we don't really want that for now. Just want to slowly simmer everything. And um, at some point, all, all the aromatics are going to be emptied from their, you know, their flavor. Like their duty is going to be complete. And we can trash those. They're like, you know, we're done. And then we're going to be left with this liquid gold. Oh, I just got a flashback and deja vu. Wow, it's so, it's so good. Mm. Wow. This is insane. All right, it's good to strain. Let's strain that bad boy. I'm gonna put this in a container, which I don't know which one. Um, I'm gonna use my beautiful uh, TikTok oven mitt that I got in my advent calendar which I've never used, but we're going to use it now. So in a small bowl, let's strain this right in there. Get all that liquid gold. Look at that. We can even leave this on the side. I'm going to keep uh, dripping from those beautiful aromatics. So our honey is good. Honey's good, you're good, you're good. The sun's coming out. Let's get to the duck. So I have this beautiful duck magret. Now, for you that don't know what difference is between a duck magret and a dog and a dog. Not a duck. That'd be weird. 
uh, duck breast is, uh, the duck breast is usually way smaller than this and has less fat because the duck magret, in French we say magret, but for you guys, it's gonna be magret, um, is the duck breast that comes from a duck that's been overfed to make foie gras. Hence the reason, it's double the size and it's way fattier, which also makes it way more delicious. Um, Cause yeah, usually like a small regular duck breast would be pretty much like almost half the size of this. So duck breast, regular duck, duck magret, duck that's been overfed for foie gras. And that's it, story's done. Now, we're gonna be uh, doing a bit of uh, trimming on this beautiful duck here. So, first thing first, sleeves up. We're gonna take out some of that fat here. We also have some silver skin to take care of. So, let's get into it. Just, I, the best tools for me is a, a butcher knife for this or a little paring knife could do the job too. So here, make sure you take all that silver skin off. Mm -hmm. And I did place it in the freezer for like 10 minutes uh, while prepping just so it's easier to kind of like uh, score the fat because when you're gonna score the fat, if it's like, if it's room temperature, it's hard to get some nice lines in there. So that's the duck tender. We're gonna use that uh, later or eat it off camera because you know, we're hungry. And then, uh, yeah, so just go around here. It's like a little, little, little spot here with streakier to kind of like get your knife in there. Just like go around it. There's some like, uh, some like valves. Also like a, see this little, I don't know if you can see it on the camera here. My girlfriend fucking hates this part. Just like a little hole. But um, yeah, I'm gonna try to take that off too. Also it's always bleeding as you can see. See here, see all the blood coming from there. So it's kind of like the, the little valve, 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 like the little valve that's feeding uh, blood to the heart of the duck. So I always like to remove that little fucking part. And now we have a beautiful duck breast. It's not pumping blood anymore. It's good. Perfect. What we're gonna do is do a fine score. So start with an angle like this and then just run your knife. Don't go too deep. Just the fat, like this, skin. And what that's gonna do is, not only is gonna look amazing once it's crispy and golden and delicious, but also it's gonna make it crispier because it's gonna let some air cracks uh, between the fat. So it's gonna get crispy and beautiful. And that's what we want. Okay. Some people do a, uh, a coarser score, if you will. I like to do a nice, fine one. Take your time, you know what's worth it. What else are you gonna do anyways, you know? Unless you have kids to feed and, you know, feeding to do and work, but like for me, I get all day. Our duck is good to go. Now the next step is probably gonna be shocking for a few of you guys that never did duck before. But when doing duck breast or even duck magret, especially duck magret, it's you want to start your duck in a cold pan. That's right. Why? Because you have so much fat in there. If you sear it in a pan like this, the outside is going to be crispy, but you have, you have way too much fat left in the middle. So this way you can render out the fat, discard, render out, discard, Render out where you get this beautiful, thin, crispy fucking crust. It's delicious. And uh, yeah, but first, we gotta season the duck. I'm only gonna do salt. No, actually, I'm gonna use a Maddie salt. Maddie Mad Matty Matteson. Beautiful gift from uh, my uh, soon to be best friend, Maddie Madison. He doesn't know yet. But uh, yeah, it's like a it's pepper mill. Shout out to Maddie Matheson for this beautiful pepper mill and salt thing here. So um, we're gonna do salt on the skin here. And that's also gonna help us achieve this wonderful 
crispy, fatty skin because salt is gonna dry out all the moisture. So go generous on there. And also don't forget, we're gonna be uh, glazing this thing with, with honey. So uh, don't be afraid to put salt because it's gonna give us this beautiful, sweet and salty duck, which I really like. And then other side as well. There you go. You can rub that in. Boom, boom, boom. So um, I only have a super large pan or a super small one, but rather go with the smaller pan. So like I said, put the duck skin side down in your pan. Uh, see if it's just perfectly. Also, it's gonna shrink, so that's fine. And now, you can put this on a stove. We're gonna start this up on a uh, medium high and let the skin render out all this fat. And then uh, we're gonna have a bowl on the side to discard some excess, some excess fat. And that's it. And that's it. Okay, number one discardo. All right, so you see how much fat Ari has got in the pan here. So what we're gonna do is, Kind of like uh, with uh, the tongue here, hold the duck in the pan and then pour that fat right in the bowl. And then, you know, rub it down. Here, take some salt up, that's perfect. All right, and then back in the pan. And we'll probably do this like four times because there's a lot of fat. So much fat. All right, uh, discard number two, hold the duck. Discard and back and let's take a look here. I think we're pretty much good for a flip actually. Wait. Oh, ma, 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 ma. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful duck breast, duck magret. All right, so the duck is now seared on all sides, underneath, on the side, extremities, everywhere. It's crispy, it's beautiful. And now we're gonna discard the fat once again, like this. And actually what I'll do is, before we get to the glazing, I'm just gonna put the duck on here for one sec. Like this, like this. And I'm just gonna give this thing a nice little dry wipe. There you go. Oh yeah. You can start fresh for the honey. There you go. So remember we have our beautiful honey here that's been infused, full of love and flavor. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna put some of this honey in here. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's beautiful. And uh, you know, you could probably finish this thing in the oven, um, but since we're gonna do it glazed in the pan, like, and I steered all sides, so you know, we're pretty much almost there, but now that honey is gonna be uh, almost caramelizing. And we're gonna add the duck in there to glaze it. And it's gonna be beautiful. So, so the duck goes back with the honey like this. All right, so now, like we like you would do it with, uh, with butter to glaze uh, to like base the steak, we're just gonna put some honey on top here. And what that's gonna do is, it's gonna keep cooking the duck from all sides while getting a beautiful glaze going. So take your time, don't burn your honey. Make sure it's like at the medium heat, so there's medium high heat, so it doesn't go. If, if you see your honey going too dark, what you can do is just add some more honey to bring it down in temperature. And yeah, keep glazing like this. Make sure you keep an eye on the skin side so it's not burning, that's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. And then keep glazing that bad boy like this, like this. Oh, mama my mia. Let's flip. Oh my God. Look at that skin. You have a good visual on the duck. You see now it's starting to be a bit too hot. 
So what we can do is just add a bit more honey to this. There you go. That's perfect. Oh my God. That's how you glaze something, guys. And now we're gonna just let this rest on a little tray. All right. So I think our duck is good to go. So I'm just gonna transfer this on here. Oh my God. So our duck has been resting for like 10 minutes. And uh, we're gonna cut it in thin slices for a sandwich. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And uh, actually this beautiful juice here, it's like the resting uh, juice from the duck and like the caramelized duck. Put this on the stove on super, super low. And we're probably gonna use this for the sammy because it's delicious. Uh, oh, wrong stove. It's a minimum. And we're gonna slice this thing right away. Ready? Wow. I think I'm gonna do it. Uh, it's like the, the, hun the honey like glaze is like hard to cut. Look at this. All right, so we're just gonna cut this in tiny slices. Wow, this is beautiful. Look at this beautiful duck. It's juicy, it's crispy outside. It's gonna be delish. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put this on a little side plate for a sec here. Oh, look at this. Now, before you all trolls call me out on my bread not being the authentic bomb me bread. Well, uh, I got nothing to say for my defense, except that I didn't find the right bread. We got a beautiful French baguette and uh, you know what? It'll be perfect. So we're gonna cut the tips here, this, and we're gonna also do a little test of the sauce here. Mm. <laughs> we're gonna open this guy up. Not all the way, like this. Open your bread like this. And we're gonna take out some of the bread inside so we have more room for the good stuff. We're not here for the bread, we're here for the stuff inside the bread. This can go in the garbage. Now we're gonna assemble our sandwich. I'm gonna use my favorite mayo the Kewpie mayo, because it's just delicious and it's perfect for this. So, mayo in. Perfect. That should be good. A little more. And this. I'm gonna use my beautiful TikTok spatula because, uh, you know, it's perfect size for this operation. So, nicely make sure the mayo is edge to edge. I think I've been a bit cheap on the mayo. So next step, oh wow, just look at those. Just look at this. Just look at that. See the little crispy fat here? There's some fat left, but it's gonna make every bite super delicious. So the duck goes in the sammy. Whoa, mamma mia. Like this, like this. So that's a beautiful, that's a beautiful honey glaze. That's the duck resting juices. I'm gonna pour that right on. Oh my God. 
That's stupid right now. Yeah, we're just getting stupid. We're gonna add our beautiful pickled veggies. That's been resting for not long enough, but it's okay. It's gonna be delicious anyways. No, I just said something about not liking a wet or saucy sandwich. Well, same for this, guys. You know, you don't want to be uh, putting all this liquid in your sando. So just spot some on a little paper here like this and this. And add our carrots and daikon like this in the middle. All right, beautiful. So here I have some fresh cilantro. I mean, you can still eat bami without it if you don't like cilantro, but it's like, such a big part of the sandwich, I feel like it's not the same experience without it, but you know. All right, let's get some green in this sandwich. So we have our beautiful cilantro here, right on top. I'm very generous because I fucking love it. That's beautiful. And then we have some green onions. You know, we didn't cut them on camera, but you can figure it out, you know, it's pretty simple, right? Green onions on top here. I'm not even sure if it's authentic to put green onions, but I just like it, so I'll just put it in there. And then some beautiful jalapeno also. I don't know what the deal is with this thing here. It's called Maggie Seasoning. A few drops livens up food flavors. Apparently it's a classic on the Bambi. I've never put it myself, but you know, I probably had it in every single Bambi I had in legit Vietnamese restaurants. So we're gonna try, I think a few drops. I think it's like, like this little umami bum at the end. Maybe someone look it up and let me know in the comments what's the point of putting Maggie in there. So a few drops on there. That should be good. Some lime juice in there for some freshness. Again, very not sure if it's authentic or not, but we're just gonna put some lime juice with a bread knife, why not? And then we're gonna splash some fresh lime on there. Oh yeah. I'm pretty much doing the exact same thing I did with Owen Han because we just went with the fucking flow and it was beautiful. So that's what we're gonna do today. And I think this is it guys. I think Kurbami is good to go. I think I, our best bet is to leave it vertical like this. So let's cut right into it. Okay. And it's finally my favorite part of the video, tasting time. Sorry. Tasting time. That's right. So, bami, dog bami, honey glaze. Look at this, look at that. Look at this, look at that. This camera, that camera, that camera, that camera. All right, let's give it a try. Mmm. Mmm. Fuck, this is actually so fucking good. Mmm. 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 Man. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this other episode of Always Hungry. If you like that video, make sure you do the usual like, comment, subscribe, hit a little bell, and I'll see you on the next episode of Always Hungry.